I sing to Yahweh, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and he has become my deliverance. He is my El, and I praise him. Elohim of my Father And I exalt Him Yahuwah is a man of battle Yahuwah is His name He has cast Pharaoh's chariots And his army into the sea and his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Our Abba in heaven, we hallow your set-apart name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you that we can declare in confidence that we have gone out of the land of Egypt, and now we are before the mountain of Yahuwah. We are grateful for making us witnesses of what you have done to the Egyptians, and how you have and will continue to bear us on eagles' wings and brought us to come near you. Thank you for giving us ears to hear your voice and giving us the strength to keep your covenant so that we are a special treasure to you, O oh, Yahuwah, above all people. For all the earth is yours, and we are unto you a kingdom of priests and a set-apart family. Thank you for laying before us all these words which you, O oh, Yahuwah, had commanded us. And so we as a people, in one accord, in one spirit, gathered in your name, we answer you in our hearts together and say, All that Yahuwah has spoken we will do. And now we prepare our hearts to hear what your Ruach HaKodesh has for us this celebration of Shavuot. Psalms 67 Elohim be merciful unto us, and bless us, and cause his face to shine upon us. Selah that thy way may be known among the earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let all of the people praise thee. O Elohim, let the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For thou shalt judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon the earth. Selah. Let the people praise thee, O Elohim. Let all of the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and Elohim, even our own Elohim, shall bless us. Elohim shall bless us, and all of the ends of the earth shall fear him. And Yahuwah said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you, and believe you forever. Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes, and let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day, Yahuwah will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Then it came to pass on the third day, in the morning, that the people witnessed the thunderings and lightnings, and they saw a thick cloud on the mountain smoking and the sound of the trumpet was very loud. So all the people that were in the camp trembled and stood far off. Then they said to Moses, You speak with us, and we will hear. But let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said to the people, Do not fear, for Yahuwah has come to test you and that his reverent fear may be before you, so that you may not sin. Did they heed to the voice of Moses? They didn't because they stood far off. 
This reference to standing far off is mentioned twice in the text. Moses did the opposite. He drew near the thick darkness where Yahuwah was. In obedience to the instructions detailed in the Book of the Covenant, from Leviticus chapter 23, verses 15 and 16, the disciples counted from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that they brought the sheaf of the wave offering, they counted 50 days to the day after the seventh Sabbath to offer a new grain offering to Yahuwah, during which Yahusha commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. In other words, draw near, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Yahusha reminding them, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Ruach HaKodesh not many days from now. You shall receive power when the Ruach HaKodesh has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Psalm 29 verse 7 says, The voice of Yahuwah divideth the flames of fire. In verse 8, The voice of Yahuwah shaketh the wilderness. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Ruach HaKodesh, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together, and they were confused, because everyone heard them speak in his own language. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages. As it was in the days of the giving of the Book of the Covenant at Mount Sinai, so it was in the filling of the Ruach HaKodesh upon those in obedience who continued with one accord in prayer and supplication found in one place, as described in Acts 2. Exodus 19 in Acts 2 is a lesson about the natural man and the spiritual man. There are amazing parallels between these two life-changing events that happened 12 to 1500 years apart. What were they? Well, both events happened to a newly redeemed people. In both times, the number three seems to be repeated a couple of times. In the Exodus account, it was on the third day, Yahuwah came down upon Mount Sinai. And in Acts 2, it was in the third hour of the day that Peter raised his voice, and those who gladly received his word were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. And in Exodus 32, 28, in the event of the golden calf, that about 3,000 men of the people fell that day. Both events had similar sounds and symbols, wind, fire, smoke, voices. Did you know the Hebrew word translated thunder in Exodus is kolot, Strong's H6963, which means voices or languages. Think about this in light of the Acts 2 event. Both events involved Yahuwah's people receiving a gift. Torah and the Ruach HaKodesh. The fire at Sinai was one fire visible by all. The fire at Pentecost was individual fires on every person and also seems to have been visible by all. There is a notable difference though in the fruit of the actions of the children of Israel in Exodus and the disciples or the apostles in the Acts account. In the event at Mount Sinai, the people kept their distance and hid from the fire. But in Acts, the fire came to the people. 
So today we're going to examine briefly what the difference is in how the children of Israel responded to Yahuwah's presence. And we're going to compare that with the acts or the actions of the Ruach HaKodesh through the apostles that led to the preparing and the receiving of the Ruach HaKodesh in Acts 2. Reading through the account in Exodus, we see that Moshe, who was a Melchizedek priest, was the one who drew near where Yahuwah was. Is it any wonder why his name means drawn? Drawn that comes from a root word to draw. So notice in Exodus 20:20 20, 20, that Moses encourages the people to draw near or to remain in the place that has been prepared for them. James 4, 8 says, draw near to Yahuwah and he will draw near to you. How was the children of Israel to draw near, you might ask? Well, if you look at what Moses tells them is to not fear, for Yahuwah is proving or testing them so that they may not sin. You see, John the Beloved tells us that perfect love casts out fear. Yahuwah, by delivering them out of Egypt, shows his initiation of his love through the promise to Abraham. The proper response to this initiation and this display of Yahuwah's love and faithfulness would be a pledge of obedience to his will, don't you think? And you would think that after being freed from hundreds of years of hard labor through signs and wonders, and now this spectacular, unparalleled event in human history at Mount Sinai, where the Creator Himself spoke the Ten Commandments in the hearing of all the people, and never before nor since has an entire nation heard the audible voice of Yahuwah all at once. It wasn't a dream, a vision, or an inner vibe, or an impression. It was a real sensory experience. They literally heard and saw and felt Yahuwah's voice. And so you would think that they would run to their Redeemer in worship and gratitude. But instead, they stood afar off and really ended up hiding from Him. Yahuwah was intending to fill them with the Ruach HaKodesh. The Spirit of Yahuwah would have equipped them to stand firm in obedience of the freshly given commandments in Exodus 19. But instead, they feared Elohim. It's almost like they didn't accept the proving and testing that they were going through that would have brought about maturity in returning the love of the Father that was initiated by Him. They failed in returning the love that Yahuwah has initiated by not keeping the first commandment. And this was evidenced by the sin of the golden calf a few chapters later. In contrast, the book of Acts, we see that during the counting of the Omer, Yahusha presented himself alive. Now, if you take a look at the Greek word behind the English word presented, you're going to see G3936, peristemi, which means to place beside or to place near. You can literally see that our risen Savior walked intimately, closely with the disciples, and he spoke of the things pertaining to the kingdom of Yahuwah. So this was happening for 40 days until Yahusha ascends into the clouds. So this time around, we see the apostles in obedience to the master's command not to leave Jerusalem and to wait to receive the Ruach HaKodesh on the feast of Shavuot. Just as Moses drew near in the thick clouds where Yahuwah was, as an example of a spiritual man, so did the apostles drew near Yahusha and walked next to the last Adam who was their quickening spirit. Within the 40 days, it's like they've reached a level of maturity in love and fear was cast out. So when Yahusha ascended, they didn't fear the great commission given to them by Mashiach. 
Instead, they were emboldened. The children of Israelites, on the other hand, stood afar off from hearing the voice of Yahuwah. And that is an example of our natural men. Clearly, the apostles learned from history and didn't repeat it. The preparation and obedience that led up to the upper room event is indeed a profound lesson for us to pay attention to today. Acts 2 was a repeat of history in receiving the Torah again, the way, the truth, and the life, who is our resurrected Yahusha. Only this time, instead of the Torah going forth from Mount Sinai and written on tables of stones, it's gone forth from Mount Zion and imprinted in the fleshly tables of the heart of the apostles. As prophesied by Isaiah, For out of Zion shall go forth the Torah, the word of Yahuwah from Jerusalem. So if we recall how we started off the counting of the Omer, we can liken ourselves being in that place on day one described in John 20 verse 22, where the apostles received the breath of life from the resurrected Savior. And so it is when we started the counting of the Omer on day one, it's like we received a fresh breath of life from our Mashiach that allowed us to walk in obedience and discipleship of observing and keeping the counting of the Omer, following Yahusha wherever we were led in reading the spoken word this last 49 days. Did you find yourself contemplating and speaking the things of the kingdom of Yahuwah? And did you find yourself drawing near and nearer? Panim to Panim in the presence of our coming King. And while we were doing that, we were really learning how to walk in spirit so we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So to this point, on day 50, on the celebration of the Feast of Shavuot or Feast of Pentecost, because we had walked in obedience, we are then earthen vessels prepared and readied to be filled by the Ruach HaKodesh. So on day 50 of the Omer counting, on Shavuot, we are then empowered to live set apart lives in victory, enabling us to do our part of the Great Commission. For us to be enabled to carry the Great Commission, we need to be filled by the Ruach. And being filled by the Ruach really helps us walk the seven spirit of Yahuwah described in Isaiah 11 verse 1 and 2. This is the breath that is breathed into us, into our nostrils, that panim to panim. I hope we realize the birthright of the inheritance that the promise to Abraham gives us. And how we take possession of the promise is by keeping the commandments. Because when we keep the commandments, that's when we have Yahusha go before us. He goes before us, assuring our ability to take possession of the inheritance. The children of Israel was redeemed out of Egypt as recipients of the inheritance. But notice, not all took possession of the promised land. You see, there's a difference. We cannot take possession unless the angel of Yahuwah, Yahusha, drives the enemies out of the land. And we see this account detailed in Exodus 23 from verse 20 to 33. All the promises detailed in this account. It starts off with, Behold, I send an angel or a messenger before you to keep you in the way and to bring you into the place which I have prepared. It's interesting to note that the English word before means panim, which means faces in Hebrew or panim to panim. So when Yahuwah breathed the breath of life into Adam's nostrils, which by the way also means face, it's like Yahuwah breathed his ruach panim to panim into mankind. How we can understand the manifestation of the ruach, the branching out of the ruach, is through the seven spirit of Yahuwah in Isaiah 11 verse 1 to 2. In Exodus 23 from verse 20 to 33, you're going to notice the word before or panim appears seven times. Do you see the connection? So it's like when we are keeping 
his commandments, when we are obeying his voice and do all that he says, we manifest the Ruach of Yahuwah by Yahusha himself going before us. And it is through this panim to panim walking is how we receive the promise of Yahuwah. So what are the promises of Yahuwah that through Yahusha will be given to us? And it kind of also comes up seven times. First one is Yahusha will keep us in the way and bring us into the place which he has prepared. Number two, Yahusha will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. Number three, Yahusha will bless your bread and your water. Number four, Yahusha will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one, this is number five, no one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land because Yahusha will fulfill the number of your days. Number six, Yahusha will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come and will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. Enemies will be driven out. Wow. And number seven, Yahuwah will increase us and therefore we will inherit the land. Do you see the confidence in that? Our personal connection with the Ruach HaKodesh is always for a purpose. We cannot expect to have a dynamic experience with the Ruach if we haven't completely surrendered ourselves to Him. Which means, by the way, that we are willing to give our lives over to Yahuwah's service. Every encounter we have with Him, every panim to panim walk with Him is for a reason and for a purpose and the purpose is to equip us for a divine task. So being filled with the Ruach HaKodesh is evidence of our readiness and willingness to be at Yahuwah's disposal for whatever task He has for us. Which really brings us to what Peter and Paul's life was like after Shavuot. What did it mean for them to walk their Melchizedek priesthood? The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you.